Legend of Total War here, and today we've got another battle from Total War Warhammer 3, which a developer is playing uh, the game, and we've just got a video here to watch. So, no no goofing you guys around this time, not pretending like I'm the one playing yet. So, yeah, this is a video to, to watch here, and I'll get to observe it and give my thoughts over it, and you guys can give your thoughts as well. Um, once again, it's on normal battle difficulty. We've got a minor settlement siege here. Um, so, this will sort of be like a template for all races, although we're only going to be able to see Ogre Kingdom's layouts at this point, uh, with lots of winding paths uh, that eventually lead into a central plaza uh, to defend it. You start off with a certain amount of supply, which if you can spend at the start and it builds things instantly, but once the battle started, things take three minutes to build and and destroy. Uh, looking over at the army that the ogres have here, uh, we've got Scrag the Slaughterer, a Firebelly, we've got a Stonehorn, single entity monster, seems very powerful. Uh, I think we've got those ones there are Crushers, uh, those ones, uh, we've got a Giant, uh, so they're just, they're just like um, Mournfang Cavalry, there's like three different variants of them. Um, there's uh, yeah, the Giant, the Ogre Man Eaters, then we've got, sorry, uh, yeah, with great weapons. Then we've got the Man Eaters with uh, Ogre Pistols. Uh, these are Mornfang Cavalries, I think they're Mornfang Cavalry Iron Fists. Uh, we've got Gorges over here, another Monstrous Infantry. Uh, Anti-Infantry Monsters and Monster Monsters Infantry. Then we've got Lead Belchers, uh, Ogre Bulls, some Lions from the High Elves, <laughs> the White Lions of Craze. No, they're just, they're reskinned Lions, uh, but they're Saber Tusks. But functionally, they're exactly the same as um, the White Lion units. Uh, we've got some Noblar Trappers and then some uh, Noblar units. So overall, in terms of their army, having watched this battle a few times now, I do have some concerns that the Ogre Kingdoms on the battlefield are... A bit lacking. Their the bulk of their army is monstrous infantry, and monstrous infantry just don't do a very good job. They they fail in so many ways. Uh, they just don't have the entity numbers, and uh, they're too spread out. They just get absolutely destroyed by melee infantry and various other things. So elements of their army that do seem to function quite well um, for their price. The noblers aren't too bad. Um, I think that Mornfang Cavalry are quite good because if you micro them well, they're they're very fast and hard hitting. The single entity monsters are quite good. Gut Magic is okay, so Lore of the Great Moor. Um, the Fire Bellies seem okay, nothing fantastic. They don't have any fast mounts that I'm aware of, uh, but they got some decent bounce spells. Um, but yeah, in terms of like comparing what I've seen so far. Um, these battles here were given choice to watch between, you know, Corn, Cinch, uh, Ogres, and Cathay. None of these battles have uh, uh, Kislev in them. And out of those four races that I've been able to observe, I've seen that Cathay and Cinch seem to be the best fighters out of them all. They're like the most difficult to deal with in both when the AI is in control of them and when the player is in control of them. And the Ogres, they definitely fall behind, but in pretty much every single case, I see, I've watched Corn suck every single time. Um, I just don't think Corn is a very strong race, at least from what, from what I've seen here. So there's a couple of Bloodthirsters in this army here, and then most of it is just like melee infantry. Um, we've got an Exalted Bloodthirster, so it's not actually... Um, uh, well, they've got an Exalted Bloodthirster. It's not um, Scarbrand. And both of them over here. And then there's just a regular Bloodthirster. So that Bloodthirster over there, this one. I mean, it's a bit jarring seeing the, the player's cursor and mine. Mine is mine is this one over here <laughs> on the uh, on the uh, unit cards. Uh, sorry, this unit cards on the, the info. But yeah, over here, that uh, Bloodthirster gets pretty beat up by the uh, Stonehorn. Would have been nice to see that, uh, that burning head to see how much damage it does to them, but we didn't see. So as the battle continues on, the uh, supplies will keep ticking up. So as the defender, you want the battle to go on as long as possible so that you can get more towers. Towers, this is something that people have often asked me, you know, in Warhammer 2. Do towers and walls count towards Bounce of Power? No. So even though the Bounce of Power is not in the player's favor right now, having towers and stuff is sort of like a hidden bonus. And you can see over here, like, this tower is doing constant damage, and it doesn't seem like the AI prioritizes trying to destroy them, because one thing that they want to do, I think I think you need actual artillery, I don't think a melee unit can go up and, like, smack it. You need to, the AI needs to actually capture the point. The thing is, even once they've captured the point that it's associated with, um, it takes three minutes for the actual tower to be fully demolished. 
So in many cases, it might be better just to run right past it and get straight to the town square. I can already see loads of different ways that you can fight these battles, some more effective than others. Um, I imagine for, for melee focused factions like Korn, you would want to spread out, if you were the attacker that is, you'd definitely want to spread out and try to make use of every single choke point that you can, so that you can just get in and have all of your entities fighting at once, and try to avoid shit like this, because having like 40 to 60% of your units just standing around not being actual engaged in, in melee is really bad because that allows for towers and magic to shoot at you, and even if you've got resistances to that stuff, it's still not doing anything, especially considering there's like two choke points up here that Korn just didn't make use of at all. Uh, but if you're playing as a faction like Cathay or, you know, even Reichland, it might be better to just have all of your forces deploy at one really tight uh, choke point and just bomb the crap out of the defenders with Hellstorm rocket batteries and magic and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, that option is not available for Korn. This is why I have concerns about Korn, because although they've got army abilities for every kill that they make, I just feel like their roster just doesn't compensate for um, for having those army abilities because everybody's got army abilities. Um, now, looking at the ogres' armies' abilities, uh, they're just not going up at all. I'm not actually entirely sure what causes it to tick up because uh, with Cinch, you just cast spells and it goes. It's going up now, um, but with the ogres, I actually have no idea what causes it. Um, I can't see anywhere that you spend food to get. Uh, the bonuses so i'm just not sure at this stage i know with corn you um you like just kill stuff and you get army abilities but um we're not looking at this from corn's point of view at this point in time so yeah the exalted bloodthirster you'd expect that to be really really tanky i mean it was taking on a giant but uh it's almost dead yeah considering the skull cannon repelled uh the wave of um Saber Tusks, I think it did pretty well considering, like, it doesn't have much damage to it. So, we got the uh, Bloodthirster really trying to take out the, the Stonehorn there. I could definitely see Stonehorns being a doom stack. Having one on its own is probably not that great, but having, like, a whole horde of them could be really good. So what the player is doing now is um, getting ready to pull back into the town square because the outer choke points are being overrun. And uh, while Korn sits there trying to uh, capture these points, gives him time to set up new defenses in the center, central plaza and also make use of a tighter, tighter um, area. And also, you know, get all of his forces together so that they can be affected by leadership auras. You can see he's trying to pull up these troops back now, which which is what I probably would have done as well. But yeah, Scrag the Slaughter, he's done a bit of damage, nothing spectacular. He's going to use a bit of gut magic here. Um, basically the fist of the maw instead of the foot of gore, except this that doesn't do much damage. So it was, it was like, yeah, it's better than nothing, but it wasn't amazing. Yeah, Winds of magic generating f you know, a little bit. It generates at a very static rate now. The more that you spend, it doesn't make any difference to the recharge rate. Uh, which could be good. Sort of compensate for having a maximum of 100 reserves from now on. So yeah, now he's getting ready to build some towers here. That point right in the center there, if he loses that, it's, it's uh, game over. And imagine if you're playing as Korn and the, uh, the defender is uh, holding the outer layers. You'd want to get into there and capture that as quickly as possible. The thing is... Corn doesn't really have the tools for it. Alright, Fire Belly ability is here, ability called Flaming Incarnate, and also this Explosion spell, I think it's called Eruption. I think the, um, the six above them there indicates their level, although I'm not entirely sure. Monstrous Infantry didn't do great. Morn Cat, Morn Fang Cavalry doing alright. Most of them are still alive. The Stonehorn's still there, but it's taken a beating. You can see this guy here was crumbling a bit there. He's almost gone. Yeah. What? So yeah, you can see that one's still got two minutes to go before that's um, being built. And um, he's starting to lose one of the uh, supply points. Alright, we got... Let's go, what's he gonna do? Fireball the... Uh, Oh, no, he just died anyway. <laughs> was it friend? I think it might have been Friendly Fire that took out the actual general of the army there. 
Well, maybe it was just he sh it, like shattered. Not entirely sure. You can see the uh, the demons of corn are starting to disintegrate. Yeah, just bringing forces back. Only the mortals of corn uh, actually run away. Well, mortals of, of any of the Chaos God, all the demons disintegrate as if they're like same mechanic as the vampires. In this position here, I definitely want to use the gut magic to try and heal the the, uh, the stone horn because I think that's his most valuable unit. That'd give him a lot more balance of power back. And it's shattered. So yeah, the the AI does try to capture the uh, the capture points, but I feel like it's a bit late. We're eight minutes into the battle; they've barely got any forces left. like it's too little too late at this point you know you can criticize the player all you want um, but you know the battle the battle is won at this point there's there's no way that Korn's forces are going to do any better in, in a more difficult to assault area with fewer troops and of course we can make you make better use of the uh, the choke points here because of uh, some remaining artillery. It was, it was a bit frustrating to see the lead belchers going to melee at the very start. So, lost one of the choke points there. But some of the uh, the towers can actually shoot into the actual capture point. So even while it's getting captured, they're sitting there getting shot. Losing balance of power. You can see it's very much in his favor now. And Korn is just not putting any real pressure on him at all. Like, it's just... It just doesn't need to do much in any given... Like, he's just not under any sort of panic. And of course, the enemy lord has fallen at this point as well. So, Korn's leadership would be hurting. It doesn't seem like uh, the leadership penalties from Lords dying has changed in Total Warhammer 3, which is sort of something that I don't think is very good in Warhammer 1 and 2. When you kill an enemy Lord in Total Warhammer, it doesn't make that big of a difference to leadership. Because uh, Total Warhammer is a fairly high leadership game. Most units have, you know, above 60 leadership on average, right? So you can see that one there is being demolished, but it still takes a while before it actually goes. And the army losses has been inflicted, and so they're all falling apart. And when the Lord dies and they, the enemy take a minus 10 leadership, it's just not that impactful. Whereas in like Total War Attila, losing the enemy, losing the Lord, like half of the enemy morale just, just is destroyed by it. And also, in Total War Attila, which I thought was really good about it, um, in Total War Attila, if the enemy, if the Lord of an army is dead, the actual commander, and a unit breaks, it always shatters. It cannot recover. Whereas that doesn't happen in, in Total War Warhammer. So I think that aspect of uh, Total War Artillery in battle is actually better than Warhammer because it's just not that impa impactful to kill, to kill the enemy lords. So yeah, this is a yeah VLC. So yeah, and we can look over some other other bits. Um, overall, I really like the layout of the of the settlements. Uh, I'll just lower the volume on this again. Just just uh, basically just do a bit of an overview. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to be too harsh on the uh, the player here because they were really trying to. <laughs> to maximize all of their roster you wouldn't normally build an army like this if you were trying to be effective especially considering a lot of these units are pretty clearly pretty trash um and it's the same sort of thing with corn's forces they were using variety um rather than what's actually going to be effective but yeah looking at the actual layout i do really like this for minor settlements i think that will make them more fun and less monotonous. Um, I can see a bunch of different uh, tactics being able to be used, like uh, spreading out your forces and um, just attacking all points at once, starting at one position, uh, having the enemy sort of mirror you and then use your fast units to just run around to the other side of the battle and run in through this way. Um, and you know, they put all their towers down here and then you just rush to the town square where they don't have anything. Or using artillery to just bombard whichever area you start off with. There's, I think there's a lot of applications for this, for the attacker and the defender. I think, uh, okay, in terms of like big concerns that I do have, Korn. I, I've watched quite a few of these battles with Korn. Korn sucks. Um, I 
kind of predicted that Korn was going to suck because it's such a low IQ faction. Because all he does is go into melee. And it seems like his army abilities don't compensate for his lack of martial prowess. I know his forces in melee are stronger than pretty much everybody else's. But it doesn't compensate for the fact that he just has such poor range and no magic abilities. Um, even though these magic spells here aren't doing a lot, they're still doing something. And Korn just doesn't have that element at all. He's kind of like fighting with one arm tied behind his back. And even though that one arm that's still fighting is stronger than everyone else's, he's still losing the majority of his engagements. So um, maybe with Korn, he'll have stronger campaign abilities in order to compensate that. Because, yeah, watching a lot of these battles here, Korn sucks, like, big time. Like, Bloodthirsters just don't seem that dangerous. The, the Korn infantry don't seem that dangerous. You know, they get absolutely obliterated by missile units. Um, and, you know, this is on normal battle difficulty and everything. Uh, maybe they'll be tougher on, on higher difficulties. We'll, we'll see. Well, when the AI is in control of them on higher difficulties. We've just got to wait and see. Um, Ogres as well don't seem to be, like, a, a particularly high tier faction. As I was saying before, of the, of the forces that I've seen, um, Cathay and Cinch seem to be a cut above the rest. They just have tools at their disposal. Um, they've got really, both of them have access to really good magic. They've got a, a good variety in their army, so you don't, you're not pigeonholed into one way of playing. Um, and they've got a lot of fast units and they've got range, especially with Cathay, a lot of range. Um, being able to absolutely obliterate corn from a distance is really good. And, you know, even your lower tier stuff. What, the thing is, if you thin out corn's infantry by 50%, and then the Korn's infantry goes into your melee unit, and your melee unit is at full strength, you'll repel the Korn unit, because you don't have to get it to 100% damage, because you just need to route it, which will happen at around 75% damage, depending on, you know, if the Lord's boosting it or whatever. Uh, but yeah, overall, um, I do like the look of the, the battles for minor settlements. I think they're going to be fun. I haven't played it myself, so I don't know for certain. Um, but in terms of rosters, concerns of the Ogres and Korn are definitely starting to mount. I'm not seeing... Uh, particularly good results out of either of them, but it seems like Corn is the biggest loser out of them all uh, at this stage, anyway. But again, that it's just early days. I'm open to being wrong, and I'll keep keep an eye out for that. Anyway, that's the end of uh, today's video. Tomorrow will be a a major settlement battle, uh, so look forward to that, and uh, we'll have uh, we'll showcase some Cathay forces as well, and. Uh, Give me some feedback down below on things that you want me to cover in that particular battle. Um, things that you wish I had covered in this battle here. I think I covered pretty much everything we needed to. Um, there's not too much going on. I mean, we didn't really even see any of these abilities get active there, so the, I couldn't even comment on it. I don't think that they're that, that impactful. We've seen fire magic before. We saw a few of the gut magic spells. They're okay. Didn't seem like a top tier lore of magic, but not the worst either. Uh, and the ogre roster, you know, bit of mixed results, nothing spectacular. I'm not seeing anything in here that was like, wow, we haven't seen that before. So ogres are a bit meh in that regard. I think they're going to be um, stronger maybe on campaign mechanics. We'll have to just wait and see. Now, end of this one here guys appreciate you and i'll see you next time fuckers bye